Bonjour Lyon, je suis Tim, je viens de la Belgique et je suis toujours en Belgique. Um, today I will talk about responsive rum. During my day job at Akamai, or in the evening when I work on the largest scale modeling website in the world, I use rum on a daily basis. And I'm a big fan of rum. I would even say that I love rum. Why? Because real user monitoring gives me real-time insights into how my website or my customer websites behave under real-world conditions. Real traffic conditions, real network conditions, different devices, different browsers, and this gives me plenty of insights. Now, although I love rum, my love is not endless. Mon amour n'est pas infini. And the reason is simple, because it is not responsive. What? Yes, in 2021, and I'm saying that real user monitoring is not responsive. The closest we get in real user monitoring, and I'm now talking about Ample's RUM, but any other tool as well, open source, Boomerang, Google Analytics, or any other tool, the closest we get is desktop, tablet, mobile. Although this is a very simple classification, and this worked 10 years ago when devices looked like this, Today, in 2021, where large phones can be bigger than a small tablet, or a large tablet can actually be bigger than a small desktop screen. And next, you, of course, have these developer screens, like this one I bought during the pandemic, where you can have multiple screens uh, next to each other. So what I'm saying is that this basic classification no longer works in 2021, and in a responsive world, we need responsive RUM. Very easy. Now, in order to make your RUM responsive, you need to do four things. And I will discuss them all four, of course. First is screen quality. 10 years ago, life was easy. A pixel was a pixel. Today, we have high resolution screens, like the, uh, the first, uh, the iPhones have a 2X Retina screen. The more, more modern Samsung or the newest iPhones, they actually have a 3X screen. Basically, in order to show la la good quality, you need to ship large images. How do you do that? Very simple. This is one of the 12 million images on my website. This is a very simple thumbnail, 160 pixels big. Now, I love performance, but my end users also care about quality. And if you have a Retina screen and you ship a standard image, then the quality does not look good. So then the technique is you ship bigger images. Like here, uh, I use a source set element and I ship a 2x image or 320 pixels image to any 2x devices. What does it mean? If you're looking at the sizes, six kilobytes for the normal image, 10 kilobytes for the 1.5 image, and 22 kilobytes for the 2x image or the 320 pixels image. Who cares, right? Six, six kilobytes, 22 kilobytes, who cares? Now, thumbnails, you typically have a lot. For example, on my search screen, I have 50 of them. 50 times 6 is 300. 50 times 22 is more than 1 megabyte. So the performance impact of these two can actually be quite different. How do you capture that with mobile desktop tablets? You can't. So what is the solution? The solution is to add an additional dimension. And how do you do that? In JavaScript, you can use window.devicePixel ratio. If you type that in the console, you will see the device pixel ratio of your screen. And I capture that I capture that value in a data layer variable, and I push that value to my RUM tools, Google Analytics or real user monitoring, doesn't matter. So I can capture that data. The result looks like this. This is now from my website. And what you instantly see, some familiar values like 1x, 2x, 3x, but also more special values like 1.25 or 2.625, which is a very popular Samsung phone. If we zoom in just on mobile devices, we see two things. Actually, we see one thing and we don't see a thing. The first thing is 
you see some very strange values like 2.54999, and there, I have more examples of these very strange values. But the key thing which is missing, I don't know if you already spotted it in the list, what is missing? 1x. Today on my website, the mobile device, when somebody connects with a mobile device, 1x screen is like almost neglectable. Now, just capturing this, although what I just showed is easy to capture, there is a problem with this approach. There are just way too many different variables. There are just way too many different device pixel ratios to extract meaningful info. So what is the solution? Luckily, the, it is quite simple. First is what you see here is the, we just create different buckets, buckets of device pixel ratio. And any device pixel ratio larger than 1.75, so 3x, 4x, 4.2, whatever, in the end, I always ship the same version. I ship the 2x image. So from a performance perspective, performance analysis perspective, I don't care about all these special device pixel ratios. I just care about which version of my website did I ship. So I don't look at what is mobile performance. I look at what is mobile performance from a bucket perspective. Looking at the global data, what do we see? Then all these different values correspond to just three buckets. Now, why didn't I have three X in here? I actually used run data and I saw how many bytes I shipped to 3x devices. And I noted what the performance impact was on uh, if you ship so many bytes on, for example, a bad mobile connection. That is the reason why I removed the, the 3x. So that's first thing. Zooming in on mobile, what do you actually see here? That 1x, only 0.19%. So based on this data, what was I able to do? I was able to remove the 1x version of the smallest image I have, which is 320 pixels. And I no longer ship that. Why? Because the chance that, it's, that that image is at the CDN layer is so small. So it's actually faster to ship the 1.5 image, maybe which is a little bit too big, but then can be served from cache. Next is screen dimensions. Same here. In theory, you can just use the device width. And what you're seeing here is coming from Google Analytics and viewed in Google Data Studio. And first thing you see is there are many, many, many variations. Just look here. This one quarter, almost 25%, is others. There's so many different variations. So same problem here. You Capturing that data is easy but it's from a performance analysis perspective, not useful. Another problem is if you're using the actual physical width of the devices, when people resize the windows, you don't take into account that you ship, for example, different images or that a different responsive version of your website is shown. So that's also not good. And then on my website, I also have the option to enforce the desktop version, for example, on a tablet when um, some people prefer the mobile version. Some people prefer the desktop version so they can switch. Of course, if they make that switch, it's still the same device, but you ship two different website versions. So solution here is simple as well. This is one of the 500,000 scale modeling products on my website. This is now from Tamiya, but there is also a very popular brand in France, Heller. Um, so that's uh, So what you're seeing here is I call this the 720 pixels large. Why? That's the design. So the main area is 720 pixels, and then the, I have a large sidebar. Now, if you take, if you would look at this slightly smaller screen, in the end, the version you ship here, in the end, is still the same. From a performance perspective, you still ship the same version, the same images. Even if another slightly smaller screen, it remains the same version. Slightly smaller, still the same, still the same. It's only at a certain point in time that you hit a breakpoint. And that's what I call 720 pixels small. That's the label I picked. And that's now the small sidebar with different type of banners, different um, sidebar that can have an impact on the performance. 
going a little bit further. This is what I call the tablet version, typically. So that's 720 pixels and then no sidebar. And then at a certain point in time, you start uh, serving smaller images. And this is then the final version, the typically what we call the mobile version, 360, 360 pixels wide, and then no sidebar. So that's the concept. So all these different variations, bundle them into some bigger buckets. Here is the JavaScript I use. Basically, I take the scroll width, and then based on the actual, based on the breakpoints I have, I give them natural labels, which I understand. That's again is shipped to real user monitoring. So here you see the design breakpoints, which is a reasonable format. And so when I look at my performance, I look at, I don't look at what is it desktop, mobile, or tablet. I look at it which version of the website do I ship? Is it the large version, the small version? If we zoom in on mobile as an example, and so what we typically see as the mobile device. 94% is 360.no, as expected. But still, 6% is using a larger version. Now, many of us look at the 95th percentile from a performance perspective, so the slowest 6%. Now, when I look at the 96th percentile of mobile, I expect to look at the mobile version of the site. While here, you would actually look at not you would not look at the mobile version of the site you would look at one of these bigger versions where you ship larger images and of course that's then potentially slower than the than the default so this allows me to get rid of the noise and zoom in on the actual data i care about this is then how it potentially looks in rum so i can look at for example largest contentful paint by design i can look for example at how many bytes i ship to the different uh to the different breakpoints. And based on that, I can do an analysis. One step further, point number three, data saver. Data saver is basically the browser or the end user asking, please, 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 please don't ship too many bytes. Now, many of you might not, might ignore that header. I don't. So what do I do? When that header is present, when somebody asks, please shave off as many bytes as possible, what do I do? A few things. First, I don't know if you can see it, but I don't ship two X images. Although the screen, uh, it, although the, the it's a high resolution screen, I would still serve smaller images. Instead of showing serving a very large high quality image, I serve a smaller one and then give the option to download the bigger one. And here at the top, you can see that there are no nice icons. So when data saver is enabled, I avoid 30 kilobytes of fonts being downloaded and I just use plain labels. All these different things make really a lightweight version of the website. Now, from a performance perspective, the lightweight version behaves entirely differently than the full version. So hence, I have created a dimension. So you can, again, using JavaScript, you can easily validate was it the full version requested or the norm, uh, or the light version. And then in, in uh, real user monitoring data or in my Google Analytics, I can then see that for the here in the when safe data mode is off, I for, you can see that I ship 216 kilobytes. And when data saver mode is on, I only ship 92 kilobytes. Same. Here you see 29 images, here 17 images. One of the other things I, for example, do is I show, instead of showing five banners, I only show two. So that's already three images gone, less bytes. Related articles or search results, instead of showing 50 items, I show maybe only 30. So I try to find, I try to squeeze off as many bytes as possible, but from a responsive perspective, from a run perspective it are two different versions and i like to just dis make the distinction between the two that was number three so after three comes four ad blockers on my website i make money by advertising now many of my users also use an ad blocker and although i don't 
prefer they don't use it. I don't block ad blockers, but I do detect the ad blockers. Why? Because the performance of your website can be entirely different when an ad blocker is enabled or disabled. Let me show you that by two examples. So this is the normal one. And when the ad blocker is enabled, you basically don't see the ad. Now, one of the things, for example, on mobile is for largest contentful paint, what you often see on mobile is that the your your uh, the mobile banner at the top is actually bigger than the than the biggest hero image, meaning that your banner, which is typically loaded later on, becomes your largest contentful paint element. And that's, for example, something you need to take into um, account. So what you see here is here you're, now we're looking at largest contentful paint when an ad blocker is enabled, you actually see that it's a little bit faster than when it's not enabled. So that's here, an ad blocker is good, but it's not always good. Let me show you this one. This is how, look, look, look nice. So this is when the page loads and my website is really designed for a fast first paint. And what typically happens is that when the page already, uh, it, it shows something on the screen and then the ad blocker kicks in, and then you have this shift to the top. Let me show it again. Page loads, and then you have this shift on the top because the the ad blocker basically decided, hey, this big 90 pixels uh, band at the top needs to be removed. Now, this resulted in some very large layout shifts on my website. Now, I really don't like layout shifts. That's really, I when I see one pixel shifting, I already get yeah, I, I don't get mad, but I, I don't feel I don't feel well. I really don't like, I really aim to have zero layout shifts. So in my run, when I use synthetic tests, when I looked at my own website, clicking around like crazy, I could not see any layout shifts. But having this, having this, um, having this dimension in run showed me that under certain conditions, I did have layout shifts and I couldn't figure out why. And because I had that dimension, I could see that the rate of layout shifts was actually much, much bigger on um, when the ad blocker was enabled than when it was not enabled. Then I knew what the problem was and I was able basically to fix it. Uh, just another note here, you can then, this is now since it's fixed, uh, but you can see that um, the, that even with the fix I implemented in general, you still see that the uh, that the ad blockers have a bigger chance of having a bad CLS score than when the ad blocker is not enabled. So that's basically what I do in the evening. I will try to bring down that number as much as possible. This brings me to the end of my presentation to summarize. In a modern world, with a lot of different screens, the simple device classification, desktop, mobile, tablet, no longer works. It's too simplistic. In order to make your RUM data more meaningful, I would really advise you to folk to add image quality and design breakpoints. So image quality, DPR, 1X, 2X, 3X, the different buckets, the design breakpoints to know which version of the website you ship to have more meaningful data. That's like almost a must. On top of that, if you have ads on the website, I would also advise you to track the performance difference between ad blockers enabled and not enabled. And if or if you haven't got a data saver mode, it might just be interesting to track that as well. With that said, merci beaucoup pour votre temps. Est-ce que vous avez des questions? Hey Tim. Um, Bonsoir tout le monde. Um, I'm going to ask uh, attendees to come to ask the question. So, est-ce qu'il y a des questions? Et vous pouvez les poser en anglais ou en français, comme vous préférez. Est-ce qu'il y a des questions pour Tim? Pour le rhume? Pour les images? Ils sont très sages. Ils sont très sages. Ils n'ont ils ont pas beaucoup de questions. Ah oui, Nicolas, une question. Ben Nicolas, je t'invite à venir. Parce que si tu ne viens pas ici, en fait, Tim ne va pas entendre ta question.
Tu m'entends bien, la team Très bien. Vous m'entendez aussi Oui, très bien. Bonjour, team. Bonjour. Merci. Merci pour la présentation. Euh, j'ai une question. J'ai l'impression que le site est disponible en plusieurs langues aussi. Euh, oui, c'est correct. Donc, euh, le site est traduit en 11 différentes langues, donc français, italien, japonais. Euh, et j'utilise aussi le, euh, la langue du site comme une dimension ah, bah, ma question. expansive. Okay. Parce que, par exemple, pour, euh, en, les mots en français sont typiquement beaucoup, beaucoup plus larges que les mots en anglais. Okay. J'avais, par exemple, des soucis avec euh, Cumulative Layout Shift en français, que je, vois, je ne voyais pas du tout en, euh, en, euh, en, euh, en anglais, par okay. exemple. Bah, C'était ma question, justement. Donc, ça fait partie aussi des, des critères euh, de responsiveur, euh, du coup. Oui, okay. c'est oui, une bonne idée, merci. Est-ce qu'il y a une autre question Non, alors moi, je vais rebondir sur la question de, de Nicolas, j'en ai une aussi. Euh, dans les différentes langues que ton site supporte, est-ce qu'il y a des langues qui ne sont pas des langues de gauche à droite C'est-à-dire des langues qui nécessitent de revoir intégralement euh, le page layout, parce que du coup le texte euh, n'est pas rédigé dans le même sens que celui euh, du français ou de l'anglais ou... Non, heureusement, je n'ai pas... Euh, Jusqu'à maintenant, je n'ai pas euh, des langues comme ça, euh, parce que ça rajoute une autre euh, dimension. Et si vous avez, d'après moi, si vous avez des sites... Euh, de gauche à droite ou de droite à gauche. Je, je rajouterai cette dimension aussi dans Rome pour découvrir des, des autres problèmes. Mais moi, je n'ai pas ce souci. Merci beaucoup. Une question de Zedan. Tu veux poser une question Je t'en prie, viens. Hey, hello, Tim. Bonjour. Um, do you see some uh, other Do you see trends in 2021? Something that you didn't talk about, but you see that it's it's trending about uh, responsive RAM, for example, network network speed, 5G, things like this. Um, yeah, good, good question. I need to um, think a bit about it. Um, yeah, what what I did see is that as soon as a country goes in lockdown, confinement that the amount that your traffic patterns really shift and that you can really yeah, see the difference in your run data because suddenly you have much more mobile users than, for example, desktop users, different network connections, different times of the day. They look at the website. So when, before, the, before the pandemic, many of my users visited the website during their lunch break because scale modeling is not something you want to look at during work times. Um, while during the pandemic, as soon as the lockdown started, uh, yeah, traffic patterns were entirely different. So that's something you need to take into account as well during uh, doing a performance analysis. Um, yeah, and other other things is yeah, the data shaver mode, the data saver mode. It's something which is compared to last year, numbers are going up of browsers supporting that. So that's one thing. And then I'm really looking forward to the native lazy loading in Safari. It's now already supported in Firefox and Chrome, basically being able to get rid of additional JavaScript. So those are two trends I would now think of. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Est-ce qu'il y a d'autres questions A priori, il n'y a pas d'autres questions, Tim. Merci beaucoup pour euh, votre temps et je râle vraiment que je ne suis pas là. <rire> On aurait préféré que tu sois là aussi. Merci beaucoup. Bonne soirée.